Hello. I'm coming. <laughs> Let me get it everything set up here. Make sure you guys are on live chat and not top chat so the feed stays current. Hi, Sarah, Tina, Billy, Canadian girl, Maggie Miller, Leslie, Jamie. Hello, Leslie. Hi, Becky. Oh, now I'm going to lose track of all of you. <laughs> Glenda, Amy, Teresa, Sherry. Oh, my Lord. Hello, everybody. Hello. I hope you are all feeling well tonight. We're going to wait a few minutes to do the giveaway. Wait for some more people to come in. Uh, and then I'm going to be doing, I'm going to attempt to do a couple of different techniques to help you guys out. Um, the Dutch pour and the bloom technique, because I know those are the two that people struggle with a lot. Hello, 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 hello. I'm so excited. Oh, Lisa, listening to my loud mouth may not be the best thing for your migraine. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Colorado. <laughs> Texas. I'm so happy you're all here. Hey, Doris. Ah, there's Lisa. My Lisa. Everybody, please thank Miss Leslie Onstat for donating these five color art kits to my channel for all of you. Well, all of you for five lucky people. She is the best. <laughs> and her products are amazing. Absolutely. So what I did for the giveaway, I had a comment picker pick five of you because there's just no way for me to write down all those names and cut them up and put them in a hat. So I had the comment picker pick five of you. I'm going to show the names in a second here. My husband's pulling them up on the screen. And I just want to thank all of you for being so supportive over the last two years. I wish I could do this for all of you. Believe me, I do. Uh, Lisa is showed up on my, my uh, end. I don't know. It's, it's showing up that I'm live on my end. Karen, doing much better. Thank you. Cookie's better. Clyde's having a little breathing issue, but we're taking care of that now. So were you all notified that I went live? I mean... Lisa saying there may be a problem. Yeah, so maybe it's just you, Lisa. All right, so here we go. I'm going to try to put the phone up into the camera so you can see the names of the winners. So... If your name is called, what you need to do is email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com, and then I'll get you in contact with Leslie, and we'll take it from there. So this first winner 
will get to pick from the five sets. So there's going to be a Dragonfly set. There's going to be a Bright Bloom set. There's going to be a five-piece interference set, a five-piece sparkle set, and then what's the other set, Leslie? I'm missing one. We have the Bright Bloom, the Dragonfly. There's one more kit. Winter Lights. There we go. Okay, so in the order that I call your name, like the first person will have first choice, second person will have second choice, so on and so forth, okay? So the first person that we have is, I hope you can see that, bev 2 Hockey. Email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com. And you get to see pictures of my cute grandson while I scroll through these. <laughs> the second winner is, Oh, he's so cute. Michelle Myers, congratulations. You are the second winner. The third winner is Lori Hinkley. Congratulations. Make sure you email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com. The fourth winner is Miss Sue Houghton, congratulations. And the fifth and final winner is Jeffrey Stewart, who is actually Miss Iris Stewart using her husband's account. <laughs> so congratulations. Those are the five winners. I will also put their name, your names in the description. Email me art by Tammy at yahoo.com. And I'm going to type that in right now also so you guys have that. Congratulations to all of you. I I love you all. I really do. You have changed my life tremendously in ways that I cannot even say. So I'm just typing in my email here. For the winners just contact me and if for some reason not all five winners claim their prize then we'll do this again okay so on with the show i have exciting news color art since miss leslie is here is coming out with their own paint line so you get your 24 karat gold deco art paint in the tubs. Color art is coming out. Now, this is just my sample, but I wanted to show you guys how beautiful it is. It's straight paint. Um, it's got, you can thin this out with water and just pour with it. It has everything that you need in there to pour. But look at this gorgeousness. Is that not beautiful? So you can see the texture of it. This, my lights are not the best in here right now, but I'm gonna tell you, this is almost identical to 24 karat gold by Decor, but I think it's more beautiful. So I just wanted to show you that. And I have two other colors that I can show you really quick. They are just absolutely stunning. And these will be out very soon, but I kind of wanted to tease you a little bit and show them to you. So it's just, it's your medium body paint. And I'm just opening the next one here. Give me a second. This one is going to be called burnished. Oh, that first one is Egyptian coin. The second one is called Burnished Copper. It's a beautiful copper color. It's so much more redder or oranger than what it's showing up in the camera right now. 
They're really gorgeous. So that's that one. And then I have one more here, but there's going to be a lot more collars coming your way. And with my coupon code, I still get the 20% off. So we'll have more specifics on them when they are released. Now this one's called Blazing Blazing Copper or Blazing Bronze. Come on, Tammy, get with it. Again, you're not seeing this color. I wish I could put my flash on, but I don't see an area to do that in the live feed. They are absolutely gorgeous. I will show you these on my channel in my next video. They are just stunning. I love them and I'm very excited. And we're actually going to use one in tonight's uh, pour. So, let me see what you all are saying here. <laughs> I need these in my life. <laughs> you sound like me. Yeah, she, Leslie really does a great job when it comes to creating these products. They're just absolutely stunning. Leslie, how many colors are you releasing at first? Hi, Tina. Hi, Kaz. Thank you for joining us. So there's your answer. Four at a time. All right. So what do you want? I'm going to do two techniques here tonight to try to help you guys. With, I'm going to do either the Dutch pour or the bloom because that's the, the majority of emails I get of people struggling. So do you want me to start with the Dutch pour first or the bloom? Hi, Pat. <laughs> okay, so we got a lot of blooms. I'm going to do both, though. Don't worry. I'm going to do both. So we'll start with the bloom. I'll try to answer questions the best that I can while working. Um, so let's talk about the pillow paint or the paint that you put down first, which I always use the brand Color Place, and that is sold at Walmart. Now, what I did was I poured these, these mediums into cups to make it easier for me so I didn't have to waste time opening paint cans. But here it is, right here, straight out of the can. There's no water. There's nothing in this. Yeah, just straight paint. Now, what I do is I like it to be a little bit thinner. So what I do is I take my bottle of water and I literally just squirt in about a half an ounce of water. And this is what, a 32 ounce cup from McDonald's that's three quarters full. So what you're trying to do basically is just loosen it up a little tiny bit. And the, the important thing to remember is after you get this consistency right here, all of the rest of your paints need to be the same consistency as this one. So if you do this one first, you'll be able to judge um, what your other colors should look like. Look like. So that is much better for me. It's flowing off the stick, but it's leaving trace. I would say this is probably 25 ounces of paint and I put maybe three quarters to, to an ounce of water to that, if that helps. For me, the consistency helps seeing that a little more versus measuring. So that's all I do for my pillow paint. It's that simple. That's done now and that goes to the side. So for my colors. This is what I'm using for my colors. This is sold by Color Art also. Um, 
it's a tintable paint base. With this, you need to add in this, okay? But with this, that is also sold by Color Art, you don't have to add in the polycrylic. It's all ready for you. You mix your powders into this, your primary element powders, and you mix your tube paints into this, and you do your bloom, and you're fantastic. So what I thought I would do tonight is I would do a couple of blooms with this and a couple of blooms with this, okay? Just to show you the difference. Now, let's say you want to go and do a swipe. You don't want to do blooms or you want to do a Dutch pour. You can go ahead and buy this and you can mix all your paints into this, thin it out with a little bit of water, and do your Dutch pour. It's that simple, okay? Um, this is called poly pour, by the way, because I know a lot of people always want to know the difference. There's one other uh, solution that I get asked about a lot, and that's called the art fluid. Now, the art fluid, I use that with my primary elements to mix them into resin. We're not going to talk about resin really tonight because we're not doing that, but that's what the art fluid is. You're, you, because these are water soluble and they won't dissolve in resin, if you pre-dissolve them with the art fluid, then they will work in resin. Or you can buy these beautiful colors in the resin art line and just use the, pot, the resin micas that were meant to be used with resin. But if you want to try to use your primary elements in resin, then the art fluid comes in. But anyway, let's get back to the bloom. So what we're gonna do first is the enamel with the polycrylic, and then I'll mix up a couple of colors with the polypore, okay? So if you can hold the questions until I'm done so I can actually pay attention, that'll be great. So, Let's say, now this is just the enamel in a bigger cup, so I don't have to keep opening the lid. So this is just straight enamel. By the way, these are five ounce cups, so we'll say that's about almost two ounces. So you can see, I really don't measure. Okay, now you have two choices. You can use the polycrylic, which is very easy to find, or you can invest in Joe Sonia, which is a little more money. Um, I feel they both work the same, okay? So, polycrylic. I forgot I opened my paints over here with my little doodad, and I need it to open my polycrylic. Okay, so there's that. So now what I do is you just need enough of this in here so that it affects the base. So again, no measuring. Just cover the surface of however much enamel you have in this cup. Now, it's important to say if you're using Sherman Williams Ultra Deep Base or you're using Glidden or an untinted house paint for this part, it's done exactly the same, okay? So just pour some in until the surface is covered. Don't worry about measuring. I promise it will work. Give it a mix. Bada bing, bada boom. That's it. Hello, Judy.
Hello to all newcomers. Okay, so we have that mixed up. And the consistency compared to the white is still a little too thick. So I'm gonna end up having to add some water, but first I'm going to mix in my colors. So I have a bunch of primary elements already mixed up in this same formula, so I'm only going to do one and then use those other ones in the pour. So we're gonna say this is an ounce and a half right here. And I'm gonna start with about that much. So I'd say a half a teaspoon. Gonna give it a mix. And this color is called rich cobalt. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful blue. Deep, oh, it, it's just like a deep royal blue. It's absolutely gorgeous. Okay. So, like I had said, it's going to be too thick. So, what I'm going to do is literally half a teaspoon of water. Mix it up good. Still a little too thick for me. Always add a small amount. Don't add in a lot of water all at once because what's going to happen is you're going to make it too thin. Then you're going to have to add some enamel back into it to make it thicker and it's just a mess. Oh, hey, Canela. Didn't see you come in. I'm mixing here. So, again, still a little too thick. Now, some people like it this thick. When you're doing a swipe, it, it's okay to have it thicker like that, too. I just like it a little bit thinner so that I don't have to blow my lungs out of my body trying to move this paint. <laughs> So that's much better. So I'd say that was about a teaspoon and a half of water. Okay. Now for two paints, you don't need much. About maybe uh, two pea sizes or a grape. I'm just going to separate this into one more cup because I don't need all of that of one color. This stuff lasts a long time. I have these cups in my Amazon, Amazon, Amazon shop and uh, they come with lids. And if you put the lid on, it lasts forever. Really, you just got to restir it when you open it after it's been sitting a while. Okay, so two paints. I'm going to go with this cobalt teal from Blick. Hello, Annette. How are you? Uh, acrylics by Cat. That would be either the Glidden Base 3 or, if you can find it, the Sherman Williams... Um, Exter exterior interior ultra deep base but they are discontinuing it so they sell that at Lowe's so there is the amount of tube paint that I put in I guess a lima bean worth and I probably could have used less than that So again, it's going to be way too thick, so you're going to have to add water. After you've 
you've done this as many times of, as I have, you just, you know how much water to add. It becomes very familiar and a lot easier. I know it's very intimidating. Judy, thank you so much. You are so kind, thank you. But I, I failed at this technique about a hundred times. I spent thousands of dollars on mediums that didn't work, um, varnishes, oils, you name it, I bought it. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things. Now you, ha you guys all have the YouTube videos. So when I first learned it, I didn't have that. You know, we had to figure it out on our own. So the tube paint is always going to take more water than the primary elements because it's thicker. Unless you're using a fluid type paint, like a golden fluid color, um, you're always going to have to use more water. So that's much better now. So those are the two colors I'm going to mix for you right now for that because like I said, I have some already mixed and I don't want to waste a bunch of time. I want to move right on to the cell activator. So the cell activator, what I use is this right here. Now the fluid form of this fluid carbon black by golden does not work as well as the heavy body. I don't know if it's something they mix it with or what it is, but this sells like crazy. So what I do for that is I put about a tablespoon worth of paint in there into the cup. And then American Floetrol, Australian Floetrol, they both work for me, so I stick with the American because it's a lot cheaper and I don't have to have it shipped in. Floetrol needs to be strained, though, before you use it, unfortunately. It has a lot of clumps in it, especially the American one. Um, so this is strained American Floetrol, and what I do is got to add a little bit at a time because if you add it all in at once... A, you can add too much and it'll be too thin. And B, this will clump because it's a heavy body paint. It'll clump up and you'll never get the clumps out. So, get it nice and smooth like a paste. And just add a little bit at a time and keep going until you have something that matches your paints that you just mixed up. You want everything to be the same thickness. Oh yeah, those flow trial boogers, they're the worst. Lugers, <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> I guess calling them flugers is a lot better than what I call them, which I won't say because it's R rated. Oh, that's right. Miss Judy bought me this awesome cap for my Floetrol bottle, and it strains it right from the bottle. They are in my Amazon shop. They work really good. You just got to make sure you rinse them out once in a while. and So you take the cap off the Floetrol bottle, you screw this thing on, and then the cap screws right onto this little doohickey. I don't have it right now. I would show it to you. But it's a strainer cap. It's awesome. So you can see I'm adding and adding and adding very slowly. 
once it starts getting to this stage where it's flowing off a stick but it's too thick then you could go ahead and add a little bit more than what you were at the beginning and i'm thinking this may be a good consistency no not yet But I have tried this with, um, so far, this black I know works, dioxazine purple from Liquitex, nope, sorry, from Golden, the fluid dioxazine purple works, great for cell activator, and of course Amsterdam white, we know. I did try fluorescent magenta by Golden. That did not work. All right, I think we're mixed up here. And if, like I said, if you have questions, try to hold them till I'm done so I can actually read them. This is good. Okay. So we have those three colors mixed up and I'm gonna pull out some others that I already mixed up, you know, for my videos. And what we're gonna do is a breadboard. I got a lot of requests. Everybody saw my breadboard in my video the other day and said, can you please do a video on that? So that's what we are going to do. I just have to get it here. Give me one second. So here she is. Now what I do is for my breadboards, I do decorate them more for hanging on your wall in the kitchen for decoration, but I do use a food safe resin if you wanted to display like sliced bread on it. Because there's resin on it, I wouldn't recommend cutting on it because you'll cut into the resin, but you could do that theoretically. I think they look beautiful hanging on the wall. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Leslie. And who else did we have here? I have to say thank you. Teresa, thank you so, so very much. That was very nice of you. Okay, so breadboards here i have it taped on the back i punched a hole through the little hole so that the paint could flow through it and i didn't prime it or anything okay i'm just going to pour right on it so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take my white house paint which believe it or not there's a big clump of something in this well, we'll fish it out in a minute. That actually feels a little bit thick already. You know, I just realized all this time that my air conditioner is running in your ears. <laughs> I do apologize. I forgot to shut that off. Sarah, thank you so, so very much. Okay, now we're good, I promise. This is a live art class, so it's not going to be that quick. We're gonna wait for that big old clump to come flying out here any minute. So the reason why I don't prime this is because um, I'm going to be resining it and if 
first of all, when it's a thick pine wood like this and you're pouring acrylic paint on it, it doesn't tend to be able to breathe like when you're doing resin. So I don't waste my time priming it. Um, if there was an air bubble, I would pop it before it was fully cured. And once you put the resin on it, you're really not going to see any of that. There is a reason why you should prime some wood when you're pouring on it, though. And that is because doing like a Dutch pour on wood, there's a lot of water to thin out your paint. And water does affect wood, especially if it's not solid piece of wood like this, if it's routed out in the back. Um, it can warp very easily. So rule of thumb is you should probably always prime your wood. It's just I know these boards and I know that I don't have to with these. Okay, so I'm just, as you can see, spreading it around town here. Just like so. And this is exactly how I made the other one. Vanel, thank you so, so much. Rambling Rose, thank you very, very much. I hope I didn't miss anybody. Really, thank you guys. Okay, so I think it's all on there. If I missed any part, it'll get covered by me blowing the looms over the top. So I mixed up that beautiful blue primary element, and that color was rich cobalt. I have the teal from Blick. So what color should we add this? Should we go with a pink, a purple? Hi, Carolyn. Cos, thank you so very much. That was very kind of you. You guys are going to make me cry. <laughs> All right, so we got some pink, purples, yellow. Well, let's see what I got here. We got, I got to get my primary elements. My, I think this is Snapdragon. This color is absolutely gorgeous. Here I go again with the gorgeous. Yeah, this is just absolutely sexy. I don't know if you probably can't see it good. When I do my regular videos, you see these colors really, really good. Let's get a pink out too, shall we? Shall we, shall we? I'm worried about the yellow because of the purple, so I may leave that out because it may muddy on me. But I'll tell you what, I'll try it. This is just a fluorescent magenta by Golden. I'll try it and then if it muddies, I'll blow it off. We'll get rid of it. I just use two sticks. This is ginger flower. Melissa, thank you so very much. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then I'll get the only yellow I have mixed up right now is a fluorescent yellow. So we're going to go there. <laughs> oh boy. Yeehaw! <laughs> yes, if I miss any of you, I apologize. I'm trying to mix and <laughs> read. And so there's my yellow. Okay. All right. So what you're going to do first, well, the way I do it is I always put down an opaque color first.
You don't have to worry about it pouring off the side or anything like that. It'll all work in the end. And now you're going to see me get lazy and I'm going to start pouring. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes it's just like, come on. You know, with, the, with my channel, I can fast forward this stuff. I really wanted to try to come on and help some of you because I know... And it's very frustrating. Okay, so there's my blue. Then what I'll do is I'll come in with a blue primary element. So right on top of that goes the rich cobalt. Okay. Just kind of plop it on there. Then I'm going to do that yellow. Why not? I'm going to try to keep it away from that purple the best that I can. So we'll get it with the blue. This yellow is really thin compared to my other colors, so let's see if it gives me a problem. Grandma Laura, welcome. You're getting schooled tonight. <laughs> All righty. So there's that yellow. Then we're going to block that off with a pink. And pray to all the saints that it doesn't make mud when the purple hits it. It won't be the first time though. So you can see I'm being very sloppy about this. It really doesn't matter because I'm going to be blowing these colors all over the board. So precision really doesn't play a part in this. Okay, then I'm going to, whoa, big stick. Use this ginger flower. I can't remember if it's ginger flower or ginger bloom because there's two. There's one for the resin art line and there's one for the primary element line. Leslie, is this ginger flower or ginger bloom? Anybody know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then my Snapdragon, Ginger Flower, thank you. Snappy Dragon's coming next, and he is a gorgeous beast. Alrighty, and one last color. I'm going to add in some dioxazine purple here, or maybe I won't. What is this color? This is some kind of a blue. Yeah, these, these additions here were a lot thinner, so hopefully we'll be all right. If your paints are cracking, it's a consistency issue. Just an FYI. 
they're either too thick, all of them, or you have some that are really, really thick and some that are really, really thin. So, again, it's very important to try to get them as close as possible. You'll see in a video how this one dries. Fingers crossed, it'll be okay. All right, so now, here comes the cell activator that we just made, the black. Okay, carbon black. Right in the center. And if you didn't see the other breadboard that I made from the video that I posted yesterday, I will show you it after I'm done with this because it's resined and it looks mighty fine. Okay. So it's time to blow. You can either mouth blow like so, or you can use your blow dryer now or you can use a straw too my problem with the blow dryer on this is that it's such a narrow area i really need my mini blower but i don't have it right now um let's see so you can see how nice that sells up I'll have to spin this around in a minute to get to the other side. Hold your ladies back or else there'll be multiple colors. It's a lot of blowing to do. When I do a uh, close-up, you'll be able to see the cells a lot better. This is a very dark palette, so it's hard I'm noticing in the camera to see it. Okay, and then you just want to keep blowing and blowing and blowing. All right, I'm going to attempt to spin this around. Just like that. We're going to get these over here now. You know, I tried really, really hard to be organized. And um, <laughs> it just somehow never works. When you're blowing, you want to pay attention to where the paints are going and what the design is doing. straw out here this is drop dead gorgeous and i know it's not showing up for you guys but it really really is
yeah. And I'm going to leave it just like that, except for right here. And that's it. I want to have a little white showing. But I tell you this, that is going to be gorgeous with resin on it. So that's it. That That is just how you do the bloom. I showed you the very easy way of mixing. Um, if you get air bubbles here, you can torch it, but you might get white specks that pop up. So it's better off to just take a toothpick and pop those. And um, yeah, it's absolutely, I'm moving from side to side here and the primary elements are just lighting up. I cannot wait to show you guys this on the channel when I upload my next video, but I will show you the one that I did make previous to this one. This one's a little lighter, the palette. Again, you can't see the true colors because it's nighttime and I can't turn my flash on apparently when I'm live. So that was the first one I did. I have to do a second coat of resin on it, but that was that one. So that's it, my friends, for that one. Now we're going to, I guess, move on to the Dutch pour. Let me see your questions. Shoot me a couple of questions if you have any questions. Thank you again for the donations. Aw. That's okay, Julie. We're still going. Thank you so very much. I wish I could bring you down close to see this, but I can't because the Wi-Fi, something with YouTube Live and the Wi-Fi, when you get close to something, it freezes it. So I'm not going to attempt fate. I'll show you guys in a video um, once I have the resin on it, how pretty. Because right now it looks very dark, but it, it is absolutely gorgeous, especially that Snapdragon. Ooh, child. <laughs> so do you have any questions okay my primary elements show up don't show up as well in the sun as yours what could be the culprit what are you mixing them with most yes melissa you have to have a cell activator but all that is is a black paint with floetrol mixed in it that's all it is Oh, what's underneath the board? There's just cups holding that up. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, you can do this once it ends. You got to give it about an hour to finalize, and then it will be on my channel as just like any other video. Oh, well, thanks for showing up, Elizabeth. I truly appreciate it. Amal, thank you. No, Sheila, for me, it's it's the same reason. It's the same on canvas as it is on wood. Uh, the reason why I do two coats of resin is because with the canvas especially, you can still see the edge of the canvas with only one coat because it's too thin. So... I like to have that domed look on the corners of my canvas, so I always do two. You don't have to do two. I just do. Because I like that they're... Uh... Bye, Kaz. Kaz, thank you so very much. I like the, the corners to look just covered, and you need to do two coats to do that. Love. 
Linda, it it's not the color or it, it's not the color place swallowing up the colors. It's got to be something with the mix that you're using for the primary elements. Unless you're doing a bloom design like this, you should not be using house paint for your base paint. You should be using acrylic white paint. I'm going to show you that right now. Acrylic paint mixed with either a, a pouring medium or Floetrol, or if you're using polypour for your primary elements, you can use that for that also. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something, the thickness of your paints is off or it's something like that. It's not the actual, because I'm using color place right here and you can see it's not swallowing up the colors. Okay, I'm gonna move this to the side and then we're gonna try a quick Dutch pour. And then if you wanna stick around, I'm gonna try that poly pour quick for a bloom. Okay, so let me just move this. I realize that, you know, some people wanted to see a bloom and some people wanted to see a Dutch pour. So instead of taking up all the time with just the bloom and then doing the poly pour next, I'll do that really quick after this Dutch pour. So Dutch pour, I need a canvas. Well, first I got to mix my paint. Now I'm only doing a couple of colors, so have no fear. This won't take forever. All right. So first I need some white paint for my base. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do mine. This is the white that I use for my Dutch pours. Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White. I think a lot of people use this. I know Canela, Canela, is Canela still here? I haven't been able to see any comments here. Dawn, thank you so much for showing up. Anybody leaving, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can see that. Well, I got tape on it still, but you can see it. <laughs> Let me do this first here. So I'm making a quantity, a big batch of white to do my Dutch pours. I won't use this all in one setting, but... I like to mix it up ahead of time and get it ready. Now, here's something very important. I only have a little bit of Floetrol left in this cup. You can get away with using this much Floetrol in your paint. You don't have to do a two to one ratio. The Floetrol is there to create cells for you. So as long as it's mixed in that paint, you can use less of it. So we're going to, depending on, I'm trying to figure out how to word this, depending on what kind of pigments you're using, depends on how much water you can use. Because you see, I just put a little bit of Floetrol in here. I'm gonna mix this around. And it's going to be pretty thick still. Now, Artist Loft is not a great quality, high quality paint. I mean, you get all this for 10 bucks when something like this will cost you 20 okay? So the more water you add into a cheaper paint, the more chances are that you'll break down the chemistry of that paint and within months, years, it'll start flaking off the canvas, okay? So I don't like to add a lot of water to a cheaper paint. So what do I do to try to thin it out more? I use more Floetrol. That is, that is my reason for doing that. So that's where the one-to-one -one ratio comes in for me. Um, 
because I don't want to use that much water in a cheaper paint. Now, if you're using all Amsterdam or Windsor and Newton paints, you know, you can do nothing but water to thin it out. Like Rinska Downa does on her channel. She uses just paint and water, but she's using finer brand paints. Um, so it matters. So now, even with that, I still have to add a bunch of water because this paint has to be really, really thin to do that Dutch pour to get it to blow around. So this is probably a 20 ounce cup, I would believe. That is two ounces of water that I just put in. I know it in my heart. <laughs> Thank you for everybody that is still here. I truly appreciate that. So, there you go. Let's see the consistency. For me, too thick still. If you ever watch Canela Sirocco, you'll see the consistency. She, she has a, a video where she shows her measurements exactly her paint is pretty thin but the one that's the thinnest is Rinska like if you ever watch her paint come out of the cup it's almost like water it seems so you want it really really thin now I tend to pour on the the same thickness that Canela does because I like her style of Dutch pour so that would be something along this right here it flows off the stick. It leaves a little trace, but it instantly disappears. And I would say if this is 20 ounces, we could estimate about 17 ounces. I put three ounces of water in to get to that consistency, okay? Now we're gonna use this for our base. We are going to use our new Egyptian coin for our gold. This, if you want to stretch it out a little bit further, you could use the flow trawl in that, but you don't need to. You can literally add some water to this, like I'm going to do, and be done with it. Now, I don't need a lot of colors, so that's why you see such a small amount here. This is a finer quality paint, so you can get away with using just water. Now, you know, I think I'm going to need a little bit more than that, so let's up it. I'm trying to be cheap here. And this is going to be a quick, you know, once I get these couple of colors, I'm only doing uh, two more colors. Once I get them mixed up, you just blow it around and you're done. This is a pretty easy technique. you before but I'm not reading comments right now because I'm trying to teach this class but rambling rose this Egyptian coin is going to be the new paint line from color art okay it's not out yet, but it's going to be out very soon. All right, so that one is mixed. And let me tell you something. There's one thing this gold has that Deco Art 24 karat gold doesn't have, and that is an extreme amount of, of sparkle. It sparkles like crazy. 
All right, so next we're going, I'm not going to use these big cups anymore because I don't need a lot of paint. I'm going to do a blue and a purple. So the purple is going to be prism violet. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of paint in here. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of Floetrol again, American Floetrol. So I basically just covered the paint with the Floetrol. I'm going to mix that first really quick. And then I'm going to add my water. And that is about a half a teaspoon of water. That's okay if you missed the beginning. This will be on my channel. Once I end the feed, it takes about an hour, and then you'll be able to view it again. You missed a lot of information on how to do the bloom if you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> Sorry, Moose. So we're going to go just a little bit more. I think I'm up to about a tablespoon of paint by of water by now. Because again, you want it thin. And that should be good. Okay. So we had a teaspoon of paint, about a teaspoon of Floetrol and a tablespoon of water. Again, these are guesstimates. All right, and the last color we're going to do here, maybe, oh, is that old or what? Well, that paint is no good. We ain't doing that one. <laughs> We're not doing that one. Give me one second to get it. Oh, here, we'll do this one again. The Blick Cobalt Teal. That paint is really old. And you know what? I just bought that. So it may be worth opening your paints to make sure they're not dehydrated in the tube. What's that all about? All right, so we have that there. Again, paint, Floetrol. Yes, Leslie, you're right. Paints that come in, in little pails like these new color art ones last longer than the tube ones do, for sure. Because you have a lid that screws on and it's airtight. Whereas these ones in the tubes, you know, you pop it open, you go to use it, you don't clean it off good, it doesn't shut all the way, the air is flowing in there while it's sitting on the shelf. Moon rocks, Michelle, are beautiful. I have a couple of older videos using the moon rocks. I did a mermaid, a seahorse, a tree. They are really fun. Miss Kathy Clammer. Hello, lady. No, just half of it, Brian. <laughs> we did a bloom. All right, a little bit more water. We did a bloom. We're doing a Dutch pour, and then I'm going to do one quick test, or not test, because I know it works, polypore bloom, to make it easy for all of you that don't want to mix all of that stuff together to do it bloom. All right, so here's my canvas, minus the cat hair, of course. I'm just going to strap on a pair of gloves. And we are going to do this. Yes, three. 
So small canvas. And a lot of the people struggling with the Dutch pour, I notice it's not their consistency they're having a problem with. It's their technique and how they're, they're blowing it out. And it doesn't look like a Dutch pour. So the secret to that is to use the right amount of paint for the canvas that you're using. Now, I have a very hard time with that because I love color. And when I start pouring it down, it's very hard for me to stop. But less is best, best in this circumstance. So there's my white paint. How thick does it need to be on the canvas? The canvas needs to be coated. If you can see your canvas through the paint, it's not enough. You need about, a, I would say, a centimeter thickness. It's, it's very hard to tell you how deep it is. Okay, so instead of me stretching that and pulling all this paint off my canvas, I'm going to add some more. Because that's a mistake that some people do too. You know, they try to stretch it far to use less paint and that's no bueno. Okay. So now you can see it's covered. When doing a Dutch pour, you want to do your sides now because once that design flows over the edge, if it does, you don't want to have to stick your finger in between the design that's there and ruin it. So there's that. And then give me one second. I cannot find any of my torches right now for some reason, except this little tiny one. So pop your bubbles. Just like so. All done. And now we're going to put our paint down. So let me move this chair out of the way. Get my blow dryer. Okay, so I'm going to start with the purple and I'm going to go, let's see, I'm going to come down here like that. That will be our design for today. Then I'm going to put my gold down next. And then my blue. Now, granted, this is not going to be a crazy beautiful Dutch pour. I did this to show you the mixing part to help with that. Um, I have hardly no color in this. So, blow dryer time for one minute. When you blow, you want to start further back and work your way in. And when you start seeing the paint move, you know that's where you need to be with your blow dryer. Oh, it would help if I plugged it <laughs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> all right, here we go. So I'm all the way back here, but now if I come in right here, I know that I'm close enough, but I have it on low. Let me turn it up.
me uh, hit the road. <laughs> I have a cat here. So my colors all wash off because I washed out because I have hardly anything on it, right? So let's see if I can blow this little part out here with my mouth. And then, yeah, that was really good. You know, it's, like I said, there's hardly no color in it, so it's very light, but you get the gist. Okay. Well, there's a mini Dutch pour really quick. Trust me, I can do a very pretty Dutch pour if I want to. <laughs> You know, it's it's all about that aim of that uh, blow dryer. That that's what the problem is for a lot of people. This is a very small eleven by fourteen, so it's hard to create a design in something so small. You know, if you're doing a triptych and they have three of them, it's one thing. But doing a full Dutch pour on something so small. In this style, that is, anyway. If you were doing a rinse kadauna where you're doing just the puddle and blowing it out, then you'd have the room. But Canela's style for this is not big enough to do her style. Anyway, I'm not going to mess around with it anymore. You get the gist, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to pop this away. And if you guys want to see that polypore bloom, how easy it is to do them, I'm going to do that right now. And then we'll call it a night, I guess. I'm sure you guys are tired of me by now. Let me just pop this out of the way. to use this paper again here. I'll just flip that over. It's from a video a few days ago. So polypour. Polypour is your no need to add anything bloom base. You mix your paints into this you make a cell activator and you go. All right, so let me see if I could get this open. Oh, I did. So here we go. We'll make a couple of colors again. Just pour however much paint you wanna make is how much you put in the cup. All right, and since I have, well, let me get a brighter color here. I have to grab a canvas anyway. I'm just going to get a small little round canvas to do this on. Um, but I'll get a brighter primary element so you can see better.
Okay. So here's a little wood round I'm just going to pour on really quick. We're going to use the color called Passion. So here is that. I'm going to take some and put it right in there. So these are two ounce cups, I believe. Nope. Three ounce, two ounces of medium, and that's, I would say, a half a teaspoon of colorant. And that easy, it's ready to go. Give it a good mix. I'm going to add a little more powder. Let's see if I can darken it just a little bit more. So we'll say three, three quarters of a teaspoon of primary elements to two ounces of polypore I have used now, and that's good. Okay. The consistency is pretty good. It's a little bit on the thinner side, but it will work. Okay. So there's that. Then I'm going to take one tube paint. I'm not going to do three colors. Um, let's see, we'll do the violet prism again. Sorry, I know it's kind of boring watching the same colors over and over, but with all the things that I've done tonight, um, it's just, I have no room to pull out my 8 million paints that I have. That's right, Brian. Listen, put it in there and mix it in. I feel like measuring really prohibits you. Because if you do somebody's measurements and it doesn't work for you, you think you fail. Just put some medium in the cup and mix in some color. Try to get it thinner and see where it takes you. And, you know, I already poured this polypore, so let's do the uh, cobalt, the rich cobalt again. Why not? I already have it out, so I might as well use it. Okay. So there you have it. You're ready. That's it. You're ready to do the bloom. That's simple. We don't have to add the polycrylic. None of that. Okay. Take your white house paint again. I'm still waiting for that big clump to come out. Was that it? Now, some people like to have a pillow in the center. And some people like me do not. I think it's easier if you tilt this paint off now, you could blow your bloom around. There it is. See it? It's right there. Let's get that out of there. Um, it's easier to blow your bloom out. And then when you see this beautiful bloom happening, you don't have to stretch it as much because you got all this white paint off of there. That's just my personal um, feeling about it. Now, I'm not selling this piece just so you know, I didn't tape it or anything. I'm just demonstrating on it. And this will be the last demonstration for tonight. All right, so you have your White House paint on there. Let's do this. Let's do the purple. That's quite a bit. Let's do the cobalt blue. Oh, that color is gorgeous. And then the passion. Another gorgeous color. And you know, I like 
it's just a mental thing with me. I like to end my bloom with a tube paint. It's just me. It's not law. I like to have a tube paint last that goes underneath the cell activator. So here's that. And let's give it a whirl, shall we? I'm going to do this one with the blow dryer because it's kind of big and... I hope you are seeing all these cells. I hope you are seeing these. Polypore, don't forget my coupon. If you buy it, 20% off. Tammy Anderson Art, 120 at colorart.com. This is gorgeous. Look at this. And you saw how easy it was. You didn't have to add in the, the polycrylic. You didn't have to add in uh, any wood conditioners or this and that in your flow trawl. That's it. I just messed that up. I shouldn't have done that. Of course, I don't tape it. I don't prep it or anything. And it's going to turn out beautiful. <laughs> Okay, so let's give it a second to rise back up. That's it. Jenny, Polly pour and paint. Thanks, Buzzman. Hey, Rodna. So I'm just waiting for a second for the paint to rise back up because if you don't wait, when you go to stretch, it'll ruin the design. And I'm just popping some information in here. For you guys, in case you decide to get it. That is polypore. If you don't want to have to use any kind of polycrylic or Joe Sonia varnish and don't want to do all that mixing, you don't want to use all this crap, you get a bottle of this and you mix your tube paints. I, you saw I didn't, I didn't even use any water, did I? Did I use water in that? I know for the this I didn't, for the primary elements I didn't, I didn't use water in any of them. And you see, it, it just works beautifully. She made that specifically for the blooms so you didn't have to do all of that mixing. Okay. So there you have it. Let me see. I'm just waiting for my camera to catch up with me. I really wish I had a brighter light in here. Hold on a minute. I'm going to try to put a flashlight on it. To see if it shows up better for you guys. I'm not going to bother stretching it because I'm not going to do anything. It's hard for me to tell where this is standing. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going the wrong way. 
I can't see the screen on my phone that's recording this. <laughs> anyway, I think you get the picture by now. <laughs> oh, God. Let's see. I really want you to see those cells. Good. I'm determined here. Of course, I, I twisted them all up now by moving it so much, but they're there. <laughs> all right, my friends, I'm going to sit down now. I'm going to take a swig of my soda to wet my whistle and see if you have any questions for me. Again, I appreciate all of you. Thanks, D. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, everything, everything, everyone. Yes, polypore is the way to go if you're struggling with the bloom. Shelly, thank you. If you're struggling with the bloom, that's the way to go, the easiest way. Um, because you literally don't have to measure. And especially if you have primary elements, uh, who was it that said the white was eating up their paints? Um, you know, there's no measuring. There's no nothing with that. You just pour it in a cup and you mix your primary elements in. Yes, Linda. So I use, I like to use the enamel because I like to mix. I bought all these products and I want to use them up. So what I use is this plus this. Okay. Or if you want to splurge, you could buy this. The Joe Sonia Gloss Varnish. This works the same to me as the polycrylic, so I don't waste my money anymore on that stuff. But I like to, I use that because I like to teach on my channel, and I know a lot of people don't have that poly pour, so I try to teach them with the enamel and then tell them that they can use the house paints too because they all work great. But if you don't want to have to mix things, poly pour is the way to go. Cherry Doll, thank you so, so much for coming. Uh, JSN, if that's not in stock, you can get anything that is an interior semi-gloss white paint. Or you can use black. As long as it's uh, tinted white or black, gray it's got to be, I use semi-gloss. I know some people use the satin, but for me, what works the best is the semi-gloss. So you can get Glidden uh, semi-gloss white. You can get any type. They, they all pretty much work the same. Um, Tina, thank you so much. I try. I just... You know, my goal is to teach you guys and to relieve some stress in your life. And if I could do that by having some fun, laughing at myself, cracking jokes, you know, I just, I don't know. I love it all. Yes, I'm going to put my code in again. Should you consider buying any of those? It's 20%. It helps a lot. It probably covers the shipping. Um... But just know that it's always in my videos, too. I'm sure that you have heard me say it. Roxy, you want a black pillow paint. The deep base term comes in when you're using untinted to put your own colors in. So what you want is Walmart sells an onyx black semi-gloss house paint. I say house, but you know, for your walls. Yes, Linda, I have. Now, Roxy, the Walmart base paints, the clear, the, 
their untinted paints do not work at all for me. The only one I use is the pillow paint. But as for coloring and all that, no, I don't, they don't work. And something like this, it's a, a very, it's based on chemistry, this technique. So if you switch one thing, like you can follow my recipe exactly, but you say, well, I don't want to buy the Amsterdam white acrylic paint. I'm going to use uh, Artist Loft white for my cell activator. I'm telling you, it's not going to work the, the right way. It, you either find a recipe that you can get the, re the ingredients to and follow that recipe, or you do a lot of testing and find what works for you. Because like I said, I can switch one thing up out of my recipe and it will not work. Oh, Molly's in here? I was looking at my painting while I was talking. Hi, Molly. Uh, Linda. Thank you, Kathy. Linda, to answer your question, I've used UPS for bigger paintings. They be, seem to be cheaper for some reason. Lori, no, the primary elements, uh, they're all green. They're all, there's, you don't need to wear a mask with her products. Hi, Crystal, thank you. <laughs> so we have any more questions? Yes, polyacrylic is a varnish. Yeah. See, Leslie can tell you all the uh, makeup of the, the products. Oh, absolutely patches. You can absolutely make them ahead of time. Coffee or tea? I'm a, I like both. I like coffee, but when I want to be fancy, I drink tea with my pinky sticking out. And I adapt a British accent. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely, Meg. You could pre-mix your paints and use them in a Dutch port. Canela does it all the time. Why do you like blooms? Uh, and that honestly, I like, it's not that I like blooms in the end. I like the cell pattern that it creates. Yes, Pinky Swear Luigi. <laughs> you know, I like these tight looking cells. I don't like per se. That's why a lot of times, Annette, you'll see me do a Dutch pour with this recipe because I like how the cells are nice and tight and they are only in certain areas. Whereas with Floetrol and paint, a Dutch pour, the cells are everywhere. What kind of paint we have? Oh, Indonesia. Yeah, it's hard. I don't, I, I hate to tell you this, but you're going to have to find a house paint that you paint your walls with that is semi-gloss. And then you're going to have to find a paint that is a base three to mix your colors into. You see, countries, other countries besides the United States, I don't know what kind of products they sell. Um, if you want to email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com and send me some pictures of your options, maybe I can help you that way. Thank you, Lori. Yeah, patches. All all mine is is uh, American Floetrol, and like I said, either carbon black heavy body, 
or white from Amsterdam. Those are my two go-tos that I know work good. I'm not sure what Karen uses. Oh boy, thank you so much. I love that one too, actually. Yeah, all the paints need to be the same consistency. Same, same, same. So do we have any more questions? Use the paints you buy that are pretty much well. Yeah, you can. Um, the problem with some of those, like the artist's loft from Michael's, is they are semi-transparent so you got to be very careful which colors you use when doing them when doing a dutch pour because they can end up looking muddy very easily so if you want to use something like that you uh you got to be careful the way that you layer them maybe put a darker blue down first and then a pink No, I do, Daya, I do not use GAC 800 at all. It does help with cracking, but I heard there's problems with it. Um, I think in the next couple of weeks, they will be released. The new uh, Prism Pour is their official name. Karen Stone, that is uh, art fluid. If you go to Color Arts and type in the words A-R-T-E and then fluid, it will come up for you. I'll type it out here for you so you can see. Uh, no, I don't think we're doing pre-order yet. Leslie, are you still here? Donna Hansen, no, I do not use Minwax wood conditioner. Sheila, the, the thing is, good night, Virginia. Sheila, the thing is, is when you're new at pouring, you have to start at the bottom. And what I mean by that is... You need to start with easy things like a flip cup video or a dirty pour video. And you have to get used to doing those more simpler fluid art techniques first. And then once you gain some experience with that and you learn that different artists just use different things to pour their paints um it gets a lot easier but i know a lot of new people have come on the scene and they see this bloom technique and they want to jump right into doing that and they're really doing themselves a disservice by not learning how to do regular acrylic pouring first Yes, and that thank you for the donation very, very much. I truly appreciate it. I know I emailed you, but I'll say it again. And to everybody else that donated tonight, thank you very, very much. Yeah, Evie, I, I don't use that. People use that. That's kind of like a cheating way to get to get cells with the when they're having a hard time with the cell activator. They'll put a few drops of that in there. It's not the same as using silicone, but almost. Yes, Cheryl, I did at the very beginning. Um, when this video ends, it'll be on my channel for you to rewatch uh, about 30 minutes after I end. I tell you, Evie, it's a very, very hard thing. You know, you gotta just keep practicing. You got to find somebody that you really like and just watch them. And, you know, 
a lot of you watch me, but if you go to my very old videos, you'll see a lot of helpful videos. Anything a year or older, I have tons of resin videos, tons of uh, acrylic pouring videos for beginners. I have videos that explain six different ways to pour paint. Hey, Kenala, you're back. So, you know, you, you really got to start at that bottom and learn those techniques first. We all went through it. You know, learn how to do a flip cup and then learn how to do a straight pour and then a string pull and then you'll realize for all those three techniques that you can use the same recipe and it's all the same thickness then if you want to do something like a dutch pour you know what the regular thickness is is of acrylic pouring and you know that when you're doing that dutch pour it needs to be thinner than that <laughs> Charles. <laughs> yeah, you know, just recently I discovered editing, but I only do it when it's something boring, like pouring a puddle of paint 25 times. Uh, oh boy, thank you. Good night. But normally I'm all talk. <laughs> as you know <laughs> yeah I have tons of resin I know do you like the, do you like my new format guys <laughs> my blue yeti everybody's con everybody is convinced that's me in that suit and I promise you if I ever danced like that I would never walk again <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's important for me to mention that Lisa Wyatt and I have a Facebook group if you're not part of that it's called United We Pour with Tammy and Lisa and we have monthly contests there and Lisa can you type that in for me and you know you can share your art and get help and it, it's just a great place. Well, guys, I think it's... Do we have any more questions? I Believe me, I love sharing my knowledge with all of you. That is why I started this. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Julie, thank you. <laughs> okay, so can you tell me again, Moose? I'm sorry. I can't remember what it was. Thanks, Molly. Oh, so I guess it's too late for me to use <laughs> Oh, Moose, that, 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 uh, recipe that I use, what about it? Is that giving you a problem or what? Linda, good night. Thank you. I, uh. Oh, it doesn't show up as well. Um, it could be the way that you're layering it. I mean, are you using a lot of colors? Why don't you email me and I'll try to help you out with it. You can show me some pictures or, you know, you have to remember when I show those, those paintings on video, I'm out in the bright sunlight or I have my flash on. So it does help a lot, but. <laughs> I 
Let's see how... That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> D, you're so funny. <laughs> yeah, Moose, just just uh, email me and we'll talk about it. So, guys, I think I'm going to end this now. Um, we've been going for quite a long time. 111 minutes to be exact. <laughs> So don't forget, if you want to buy any of the color art products, my code, make sure you use it. Um, the new Prism Pour is coming out very soon. That's, um, you saw a preview of three colors. I don't even want to tell you how delicious the Holly Berry Red is. Because let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm t I would love to bathe in it. I could look, I would literally bathe in it. Cheryl, good night. So that's coming out soon. But if you want that polypore for your easy blooms, if you got some primary elements, some of that, and a good cell activator, you're good to go. Moose, good night. And yes, join our Facebook group, United We Pour with Tammy and Lisa. We have over 5,000 people in there. Again, thank you for the donations. And I guess I will catch you on the flip side. We should do this more often, I think. I think I should hold more live classes, maybe. It was kind of fun, to be honest. Got to walk the pooch. <laughs> yes. If you could thumbs up, I appreciate it. Yes, Leslie. Mara, I haven't seen you in so long, hon. Good night. I got to start doing my resin videos again so Miss Mara will come back to me. <laughs> Bye, Canela. Thank you for coming in and supporting me. Lisa, thank you for modding. Uh, anybody else that's still in here? Artist wise, thank you. And um, I guess I will talk to you guys soon. More lives, yes, definitely. We will do more lives. Maybe we'll do like Tammy Tuesday. <laughs> uh, the names will be listed in the description of this video, casual, once it finishes finalizing. Um, I can say that your name was not one, sadly. Yes, I got to get that board done ASAP. Beverly, that will be all. You'll see a full tutorial on that as soon as this video is uploaded. But I use American Floetrol and I use Golden's Carbon Black. Uh, heavy body paint but as soon as this video is able to be viewed within a half an hour after I end it right now you will be able to see exactly how I mixed it okay Kathy those names were at the beginning hon I'm gonna put them in the, the bottom oh well Okay, Mara, no worries. Tammy Tuesdays. We'll have tacos and painting. Tacos, tequila, and painting. <laughs> Actually, I don't drink anymore, so it'll have to be soda. <laughs> all right, guys, I love you all. Have a great night. I have to go feed Clyde before he chews my face off. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, go on, Mindy. Go quick, quick, quick. Classes, email me, Jenny. Um, I'm behind on, yes, I'm behind on answering emails. I've been getting a ton of them. So email me, Art by Tammy. 
at yahoo.com and I can talk to you about that. Where's Mindy's question? Did it come up yet? What causes putting? What is putting? Pitting after torching on a ring pour. Are you using silicone or satin enamel or anything like that in your paint, Mindy? Thanks, Lisa. Are you using a what? Why don't you email me, Mindy, art by Tammy at yahoo.com, and then we can d discuss it privately. I will try to help you. Okay, hon? But Leslie's right. Torching too much can cause that, too. All right, guys. I love you all. And until next time, yeah, set, send me uh, my emails right above your comment. Send me a couple of pictures and I'll try to help you out. Okay, I love you all, guys. Have a great night and happy pouring. Happy pouring. Give me Jackie. Give me. Say happy pouring. <laughs> He's a little one. I could fit him in there. <laughs> oh, you couldn't see him anyway. Good night, guys. Love y'all.